Hello guys and welcome back, this time, we will continue with the organic architecture series, explaining the basic methods on how to do organic modeling, we will also showcase couple of examples in this tutorial which might help you have a better understanding about those kind of structures, so without any further ado, let us jump into it. To start with the first example, I will keep only one edge from this plane. So the idea here is to make those kind of structures, and we do that by simply drawing the basic exterior lines of this shape. Now with this edge, we can select the first vertex, and just move it along the y axis to a point where we get similar lines from the shape we want to make. Then we can take this second vertex and copy it along the x axis two times. Now back to the first vertex, we can hit Shift D to make a copy from it, and with the same process we can draw the opposite line for the shape. Now those lines identify the structure bottom level, so I will add two extra levels by copying them on the z-axis, once you copy the line, go into edit mode and try to fix the vertices position to get the accurate shape of each level. So again, I'm just moving those vertices to make an extension in each level and give the structure more of a dynamic look, and try to keep the start and end vertices near each other as much as possible, you can after that edit them once we make those lines into a surface. for those vertices on this side, I will make them on the same bottom level by scaling them on the z axis, now once we are done with those lines, we can select all the vertices in edit mode and on the sidebar, look for the loop tools menu, this one can be enabled from the add on settings and it's built in blender. So now if we hit the loft button, we can turn those lines into surface, and check the loop box to get the bottom face. We can now edit this front side, maybe give it a slash look by moving the dots. I did select those vertices and hit F to fill the face, and we'll do the same thing for the front side. Now that we have the basic shape, I can scale it a bit just to give it more height, and also extend this back side along the x axis, once we are done, go to the modifiers panel and add to this shape a subdivision surface, this one plays a major role in making organic structures, we can with the levels increase the smoothness of this shape. We can also select this edge in edit mode and bevel it to give it a less rounded look, you can now select those faces, insert and extrude them to inside, and basically use any different tool while your shape keeps the same look that you need.
After we did those top extrusions, we can select those edges on the top and hit Shift D to copy them, then hit P to separate this selection from the main mesh. We did copy an extra face so I will delete it, then with those vertices, we can hit F to make it a surface, then go back to object mode and apply the subdivision modifier for this part only. Now we can add a new modifier called wireframe, this one will turn the shape into metal frame that can set over those cuts that we made on the main mesh. Add another subdivision modifier to give it more organic look, you can now continue by covering all the gaps with frames like this one, maybe add some inner cuts to identify the windows places, this kind of structures will present in a great way even with only grey solid look, so have fun with it. For the second case, we will do this kind of shapes, this will rely on deforming with FFD objects, and morphing with shape keys, so to do this one, we need a similar mesh, a torus can help us with this shape so let us add one here, and change the settings to get more of a structure look on it. Now to deform this shape, we can add a modifier called lattice, with this one we need an object that also has the same name, so hit shift A to add a lattice object, try to center it with your torus, then we can scale it up around the mesh. In the lattice settings we can increase the resolution to get more control with the deformation, so now we need assign the FFD object in the modifier, then we can select each of the dots on this object and move it around to get the shape we need. Once we are done, we can apply the modifier and just hide the lattice object. To split this mesh into two parts, top and bottom ones, we can with edge selection highlight two ring edges from both the inner and outer side of this mesh, then with loop selection we can pick one half and separate it. Now with the top half we can change the topology direction for those edges, and there are two ways to do that, first one is the fastest, we select all faces and poke them, then we hit trice to quads to get this, however this one don't work well with curvy shapes, still will work most of the times. The second way is done by subdivide those faces, then with the decimate modifier, we unsubdivided them again to get the topology we need, and apply the modifier once you're done, you can also enable some add-ons for more topology pattern, we won't be doing that but you can experiment with it. Now with the top part, we can select all faces again and inset them. I will first inset the faces by a small amount, then use individual origin to scale down the inset area, 
with mesh like this that have faces with different dimensions, using inset with scale can help you avoid intersecting vertices over each other, so I will scale them down to a small area. Now what I need to do is delete those faces, however once you do that, you will lose selection. To avoid this problem we can assign this selection to a vertices group. Now we can delete those faces, then hit the select button under the group name to get them selected again. So to morph this shape, I will select the top half and make a new copy. In this copy, we will again expand the area between the vertices, and join those two shapes with each other's. Then, we can select this shape and the main mesh in this order. Go to the same area under the vertices group and hit this arrow button, choose join as shape to morph the main mesh based on the copy we made, now if we select the torus here, we can slide this value to see how it change our main mesh. Now we can add another vertices group to the main mesh, and with this new group, we have the ability to use the weight paint on it, so I will do a basic paint with gradient brush. Now to understand those colors, red is full strength, and blue is the minimum value so that means the red areas will get the morph effect with the max level, while the blue spots will stay unaffected. Now once we are done drawing, we can assign this second group with the color weight info inside our morph process, and hear how it looks, this can open the door to many aspects in organic architecture, organic wall, basic shapes and abstract structures, with this weight paint we can animate those vertices, we did make a tutorial on vertices weight proximity animation on the channel, so check it out. Once we are done with the shape keys, you will need to get the mesh out of the morphing process, and you can't just delete the copy like this, what you need to do is hit the arrow button again and choose new shape from mix. This way we mix the process together, and now we can delete them to get the mesh alone. After that we can go back to the basic tool where we shade smooth the shape, fill the gaps to work as windows, maybe even add subdivision on it for more organic shape, however be careful with it if you have an old machine. Too much subdivisions can freeze your work, so that's it guys, I hope you've learned something new from this course, give me your thoughts about this kind of videos in the comment section, and as always, stay sharp, goodbye.